Hey you guys, what is up? It's Dunbar Snackbar here with Game 2 of the World Series. Game 1 ended up being a big loss for me here. Ended up being that Alex Rodriguez got a home run in the bottom of the ninth to propel the Yankees to the victory in Game 1. Now this game, I'm going up against CC Sabathia, so I know this one is not going to be a piece of cake either. Of course, I'm going to be playing as the Chicago Cubs here in this one. Man, I'm loving how this is going. The World Series is definitely something that is a blast for me. I hope you guys are liking it here as well. So I've got a feeling of revenge, I guess, in this one here. I want to come away with a win uh, here in Yankee Stadium. I don't want to be down two games to nothing, of course, in the World Series. I would love to be able to tie it up. Giovanni Soto here starting off the game for me with a home run. That's something I'm definitely liking here. So my offensive production, which served me so well during the regular season, is really showing its form here still in the postseason. Game one of the World Series, I hit a lot of home runs. Game two of the World Series, let's hope that that continues as well. Let's hope I can limit the home runs from the Yankees because that's really what killed me last game as well. So I'm glad one to nothing here early on in the game for me. Hopefully that momentum, which I talked about last game, will kind of be with me here for the entire part of the game definitely seems that early on I'll be able to produce so of course going against CC Sabathia one of the best left handers that you were gonna find in all of baseball is not gonna be easy uh, like I was saying earlier so home runs like these I think may be few and far between here in this game Aramis Ramirez taking this ball here into right center you know that's gonna be extra bases here gonna be going for the double and I'm going to get there without a problem at all. Don't necessarily know why he had to slide. Probably could have got there standing up, but that's okay. Sometimes I just get really worried because you get those really odd injuries from sliding. But anyway, with this hit in the right field, now I've got runners on first and third. And with no outs, I think i got a pretty good chance to be able to bring some more runs here rather than just that one run I had here earlier. Now, Reed Johnson wasn't somebody you really saw too much here during the regular season. He's going to be coming up with a sacrifice fly that's going to allow Ramirez to be able to come home. That was a pretty sweet slide. All right, so we're looking 2 to nothing here at the top of the second. That, of course, was the first out. I said this last game, sacrifice flies are not pretty, but I will take them as long as they give me runs. So, CC, man, I was expecting more than this here. Second inning, already got two runs. All right, so Yankees do get out of that one here, which is not too bad. And I've got Carlos Zambrano pitching for me in this game which I was excited about because I told you guys last time one of the things that I loved about Zambrano during the regular season was not only could he pitch, but he could also hit the ball as well. I mean, he had like a 60-something, uh, I think I think it's 60-something for power. This guy hit some home runs. I think it would be kind of cool to see if he can hit a home run. And here I go using the glitch to my advantage again. Go with that cutter for strike one. But... Zambrano had a lot of success during the regular season, ended up coming out with a winning record. Not what I would have expected from Zambrano here in real life, but oh, it's a video game, you guys. Let's have some fun. All right, so going with the splitter here, uh, we're going to be looking at an 0-2 count here on this one up against Russell Martin here. So going to be going, ah, dang it, I thought that was going to be strike three, but with the foul, I get another chance here. So let's see what I try and go with here. Ooh, slider for a ball. Slider's a pitch I definitely like to be able to have a pitcher that can do that really, really well because those sliders, the computer has a hard time hitting them. Man, that, would a, that was a great place splitter there to be able to get strike three. So Zambrano showing his stuff here as well. That's actually his first strike out of the game. Didn't come as fast as I'd like, but there's been a lot of ground balls coming out of him here in this game, which is something I'll definitely take. Here we go with Reed Johnson at the plate once again. You can tell top of the fourth with two outs. Man, a hit by pitch. Dang, CeCe, you're really starting to fall apart here. The Yankees need you, man. Come on. All right, so on a 3-0 count to Carlos Pena. This one goes into left center, and this may score two. Try to think about going three with Pena, but man, two RBIs here expands the lead even more for me now. Four to nothing in the top of the fourth here at Yankee Stadium. And wow, this is not what I was expecting in this game with CeCe. Because, I mean, I've gone up against CeCe a number of times, and I think that if there's any team that I could have gone up against in the American League and had the most success with, it's the Yankees. Because everybody likes watching the Yankees, so I play as or against the Yankees so much. But I know what CeCe can do, and... This is definitely not it. All right. 
So here we go with A-Rod, and A-Rod just destroyed me a ton last night. Is Of course, he hit the game-winning home run like I talked about earlier, but I've really underestimated A-Rod here in this series, and I've definitely learned my lesson after game one. Because like I was saying, everybody in this game, whether it be the team or an individual, they're not going to play anything like they do in real life. And so with A-Rod, you know, with him getting injured and not just playing as well all around last season, definitely wasn't the case here in the game. All right, so i got to take a look. See, this is me being sneaky, doing my research here on A-Rod because I really don't want the same thing to happen here in this game. I don't want to get burned like I was earlier. So here we go. Man, sweet. Slider does it again. That one would have been a ball if he had been able to hold off on that one, but... That's all right. Sometimes you got to throw it a little bit outside to get them to swing at something that you know that they're not going to be able to hit. You just got to, I mean, you risk pitch count at that point here. Anyway, still in the bottom of the fourth. This is actually going to be a hit for the Yankees. Now, I, they've gotten some hits prior to this one, but uh, I thought I'd show an offensive highlight for the Yankees since there really haven't been too many so far. All right, so Nick Swisher here up at the plate. Now, Nick Swisher is another guy who did pretty good against me the night before. But Nick Swisher is a pretty good player. I mean, I like him. He's One of the things I like about Nick Swisher is you can put him in just about any position, really, and he's going to be good. So, I mean, he's one of those all-around players that you just love having on your team. Great utility guy. So, man, I got to – I don't know. I'd like to actually trade for Swisher if I could in, in franchise mode, but – I don't know if I'll necessarily do that. Anyway, this delivery here, another slider with the strikeout. Man, that slider might become the pitch that I use here to get out of a number of situations here with Zambrano. All right, so Giovanni Soto with a hit. Oh, man, that's going to be an error. That's going to allow me to get on second. Wow. You really don't see too many outfielders drop the ball like that, but you'll get a chance to take a look at it here one more time. And, oh, wow, that is kind of sad. Anyway, that might hurt the Yankees a lot. Errors, especially in the World Series, is not something that you want to have, but it looks like that the Yankees did get out of that mess here. So, yes, it was an error, but really no harm, no foul. All right, so Johnson getting this one here in left field, throwing it in. The Yankees now have a runner on first as we are in the bottom of the fifth with no outs. So a runner on here at this point is something i got to be worried about. This uh, pitch to Jeter, though. DeWitt to Castro to Pena for the double play. So ends up being not too bad at all because I get that uh, defensive miracle, it felt like. Man, I'm glad I got that one. Anyway, that was a 4-6-3 double play. So Yankees getting another hit. This little chopper in the center field. He's going to put a runner on first. Bottom of the fifth. The Yankees are still scoreless at this point. This was another thing that I wasn't expecting. I was trying to go with the glitch, but the computer came through on that one. So i got to be a little bit more careful when I do it because, yeah, they can still hit it. And another hit they get here going down the left field line. Now, is Johnson going to be able to get it in time? Absolutely. I was kind of worried. And we'd be looking at runners on first and third now. That just, frankly, wouldn't be cool. Now, DeWitt. Oh, is he going to get the out? Oh, man. Not in enough time to be able to get that out. Cano, man. You are one speedy little guy. All right, so bases are loaded. Johnson not able to get to that fly ball. Yankees are going to get on the board here, not with just one, but with two runs. They still have runners on first and second. So four to two, and in baseball, anything can happen. So I wasn't necessarily comfortable with a four to nothing lead, but I was feeling pretty confident about it. I was feeling a lot more comfortable with a 4 to nothing lead as opposed to a 4-2 to two lead. And with the way that Zambrano's going, i got to call somebody out to calm him down because his composure is just going everywhere. And I usually don't do this with a lot of pitchers. I mean, sometimes I try and play through it, but I'm not risking it here in the World Series. And that means if I have to send somebody else to the mound here again, Carlos Zambrano is getting sat down. So I might start warming somebody up here just in case because you never know what happens. But I get out of the pickle, so I'm cool with that. All right, so Tyler Colvin, a hit down the left field line. Are we looking at extra bases? Not this time, which I was kind of hoping for. want to get those runs now because I haven't scored for a little bit. 
I need to be able to get it. Oh, what is this? Hitting Pena now? CC, what's going on, man? You like mad at us or something? You usually don't see two hitters hit by the pitcher in the game, but anyway, regardless of what happens, Yankees get out of this one, and you got to give them props. I mean, for all the bad situations that the Yankees have been in in this game, they've gotten out of them. So props to them. And I really haven't had too many chances where I've really been down or um, you know kind of been in a nasty situation. I mean, I have a couple times, but Zambrano's usually pretty decent in getting out of those, uh, at least from the regular season. Then again, I didn't play against the Yankees too much, so who knows? This is going to be very, very interesting to see just kind of how this all plays out. I'm surprised I'm up here at this point, but in the last game, it was kind of back and forth, it seems, for a little bit as well. as so who's up, who is down. Splitter getting the strikeout on that one as opposed to the slider. Got to mix it up a little bit. If the computer knows what's coming its way, uh, you're talking about a base hit. All right, bottom of the six now. Still got Zambrano in. Shot in the left center will be... Multiple bases here for the Yankees. Are we talking to the triple? Is Bird able to get it in time? Getting it to Castro. Ah, man, Ramirez isn't able to get the tag. We are looking at a triple. That one was pretty close. But I don't know. Having somebody on third, 90 feet away from home, is not something that I'm comfortable with. And with just one out, we could be talking about another run. Castro, sweet throw over to first to get the out, but the runner does score. And we're looking 4-3 to three here in the bottom of the six. Yankees creeping their way back here into this one. And we could be talking about a tie game here in a little bit. All right, so with this hit in the right field, runners at first and third. Feeling comfortable about this. No outs. What do I do here at this point? Should I just lay down the bunt? Should I try and just go and, and hit the ball and kind of see what happens? It all depends on who's coming up next. It's going to be Giovanni Soto. So I'm going to try and go with the hit. Luckily, he is able to get that one in the center field. We're talking about another run here for the Cubs in this one with runners on first and second. Five to three now for the Cubs. Soto has done pretty well this game. Actually did a great job last game as well. So I've had a lot of hitters, though, who, if you take a look at their stats, it's just absolutely phenomenal. Alfonso Soriano was one of them, too. But this time kind of hurts me a little bit with the double play that makes it so I only have a runner on third with two outs. But a lot can happen with just two outs. This hit going down in the right field is going to score one more run. So we are looking at 6-3 to three now. So here we are with a three-run lead. I'm feeling more comfortable about this then than a 4-3 lead here. But I don't know. Maybe this can continue. I mean, that was a good two-out hit here. Colvin, let's see what he's going to be able to do with two outs here as well. This hit into left field is going to be a home run. But two more runs on the board thanks to Colvin, who had a good home run in the last game as well. Man, CC, buddy. I'm surprised that you've lasted this long. I don't know if I necessarily, necessarily worn him down, but this has been a big hit or a big inning for us offensively and hitting-wise. And I think that they absolutely have to sit down CC after this one here. But we'll look and see what happens because, of course, it's the computer, not me. Maybe I should hope that the Yankees keep CC in here. But, man, that was a big hit to the other side. Whew. A lot of the hits in the series have been to right field, so it's kind of nice to see one going to left. And the Yankees do decide to sit down CC and bring in Pedro Feliciano. Man, I haven't faced him that much, so this actually might not work, or work out pretty well for the Yankees because, like I was saying last game, brought in Jabba. I was excited about that second pitch. I hit a home run. I don't think that is necessarily going to be able to happen here. But I don't know. But having the lead that I do now, I'm very, very comfortable with this. And now it's not necessarily a matter of trying to produce offensively. But it's really produced defensively. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to sit down Zimbrano. I'm going to bring in Sean Marshall here, a left-hander. And just kind of mix things up here a little bit. So we both go with some pitching changes. But... Not that I didn't trust Zambrano or anything like that, but I also kind of wanted to sit him down because I didn't want to use more energy out of him than I necessarily needed to because obviously I'm not going with the sweep. Even if it's something like 4-1, to one, or I mean if you know I'm up three games to one, I still got to factor in a Yankees win or something like that. So 8-3 to three here, bottom of the seventh. On taking advantage of the glitch. 
sweet. Every single time. Now, I do like that Marshall has the 12-6 curve. You guys know that that's like my favorite pitch in this game, just all together. So you'll probably be seeing some more curveballs, and it's actually his best pitch as well, which you can see on the side here. So he's got a good balance of pitches, which will help me out quite a bit. Some of these pitches the Yankees haven't seen in this game, so the computer, of course, isn't going to be expecting some of this, especially coming from a left-hander here in this one. So on the 0-2 count here with this pitch, we're talking strike three with the 12-6 curve. Marshall is making an impact here early on in this game here with that curveball. I'm expecting to see a little bit more out of him as well. So here we are, bottom of the ninth. You got to remember that this part in the last game was absolutely crucial. And another home run for the Yankees in the bottom of the ninth. Jones, who hit a home run last night, gets one right here. And I got worried. I'm not going to lie. I mean, it was the home runs that killed me last game. Hopefully Marshall is going to have this be the only home run that is going to be hit against him here in this game because I'm not wanting a comeback by the Yankees. I mean, it's going to be tough. And if they do come back, I think it's going to be pretty embarrassing here. So we're looking at an 8-4 to four game right now. I mean, four innings or four runs in one inning is very, very tough to do, especially when the pressure is on like it is here in the World Series for Yankees fans. All right, so two outs on the 0-2 count here. This pitch is going to end up being a ground ball to DeWitt. He's going to get that over to Pena to end the game. So this is my first win in the World Series. The series is tied 1-1, and we're going to be going back to Chicago to play at Wrigley Field. So I'm going to be at home. I will have the advantage. And I'm loving how this is going. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Go back and watch Game 1 if you didn't. Uh, kind of paint a little better picture on why I wanted to win this game so badly. But anyway, you guys are awesome as always. I hope you have a good one.